my most beloved Dr. Martin. First of all, may I just say what an absolute honour it is to write to a man such as yourself, God rest your soul. It's now been the 316th day of wearing these precious trophies of painted black on my size 9 feet. Feet that were too flat and too wide to wear shoes with a heel above 2 inches, too painful for me to handle. It was then on a cold December afternoon of 2010 where I found myself browsing with my mother in an old overcrowded vintage shop on Greenwich High Street, London. My heavy bored eyes skimmed through the hunter boots, the Bieber labels, the sandals and the crocodile stilettos. Then, a 90 degree head turn and I'm suddenly face to face with a pair of fresh visions of size niners in the DM section. Immediately we fall in love, which is £50 in my back pocket. I haggle them down to £47.50. Since then we've been inseparable. We've crossed countries, skimmed rocks, rode roller coasters, slid snow, bathed on beaches, ran rocks. Our relationship became so committed that only recently did they decide to accompany me to my local gym. I never take them off. Only a month away from our anniversary and we're still a team. I only have you to thank, Dr. Martin. A man of invention, creativity and genius of every size niner. Thank you for bringing us together. Yours faithfully, Georgina M. Jackson. to an acquaintance in my school. It came from Plymouth. I read the first opening words. Dear friend. Already I feel welcome. What's followed afterwards is a flow of poetry. A sense of confession is conveyed within this unknown person's words. As though it's the first time she's told this to anyone. There's no address attached but her name. A name I'm so eager to type into Facebook search. But where is the fun in that? In fact, Thinking about it, I've supported you and your family for years and years and years, and all I ever get is a stupid out on St Patrick's Day. I think you owe me. I have particularly, permanently damaged my liver and brain for you, so it's time to pay up, you Irish bastard. For Christmas, I'd like some really, really bendy straws. We will keep our new friendship a secret and our identities a mystery, never to be solved. Her words have touched me along with yesterday. Because I just felt that because of the breakthroughs of technology such as Facebook and social networking, the letter writing's just gone now. And so, and recently, I've been looking around post boxes, and they've all had signs saying. Um, don't use them anymore because the Royal Mail's just gone downhill and I think it's all thanks to the breakthrough of um, yeah. emailing and whatnot. So and that kind of upset me so I thought how could I so how could I start this off? And um, I remember I received and I remember looking at three places that meant to me the most, which were London, Totnes and um, Falmouth, just because they they're three places that I've lived in my whole life. And yeah. uh, that's where I received my most cherished letters and Totnes was the first place where I see my first person one, which was from my grandmother over there. Yeah. And that made me want to look into the sort of pursuit of happiness, which was my first step. So what I did was I just asked, pe asked people who went to Darsington, I'm going back there for a weekend, do you have anything you want to say or do you have anything you want me to plant there? And people just bombarded me with all these, all these wonderful messages. It, it sucks out. There's something, but if I write... I write much quicker and I'm much more pleased with what I write if I write it with, with a pen or a pencil in too. Like I've got this little notebook here, yeah. which I carry around with me, oh. and uh, which is the little pink book, the Greater Pink Book or Greater Pink Songs, That's weird. Uh, which I just write in. Like I have, I have it by my bedside so I can just write, if I get an idea I can just write it down. Yeah. But it's, it's much more... Therapeutic. It's therapeutic, because you actually feel like you're actually physically creating something. That's what, that's what, that's how I feel whenever I write to someone, because I feel that 
for example, if, you're, if I'm writing a letter to my mum saying, tell her what I did, I'll just, I'll just be very blunt in the email. Whereas I feel if you're writing a letter, you end up pouring out your entire life story. I end up telling my best friend things that I never told him before through, through a five page essay. Whereas if it was on Facebook, it'd be like, hi, how are you? What are you up to? Oh, yeah, that's great, good. Okay, God, go by. But well, I'm the complete opposite. <laughs> really? Look, I can't. If I start writing something down, I'm like, mind blank. I get utter writer's block straight away. But I, I learned the lesson of actually how precious this the book becomes when you have to take care of it because I, I have another one which I lost, which there's like four or five songs in there. Luckily, I remember them, but I just like I, I, I had like I had like this little panic like I've lost my little book, my little yellow yellow notebooks. Like shit, and mm -hmm. I kind of just kind of realised I actually never cared about like a little stupid thing so much before. Yeah, I'm surprised at just the amount how much of an impact this has had on certain people, it's almost, it's been such an encouragement for them as well, even just finding things and putting it as part of an exhibition, people have been like, this is actually, this is, this is so incredible, but and I, now I'm just thinking, well, anyone could do this, it's so, it's so easy, I think we just, we've just all been just sucked into this dimension of the social networking and technology yeah. era. Yeah, so that's not, not very nice. I, I, I've tried because I said in my separate project I would be active on social networking sites and stuff, and but I haven't not been able to because it just, just doesn't work for me. But I, I, I kind of I have to get over that at some point because I will have to actually be a bit more active. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I find I can actually I can write academically on, 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 a, on a computer, but just creatively I cannot write mm -hmm. on a computer. For, formally for computer and creatively for yeah. writing. I don't like making a mess when I'm writing. Do some silly mistake and have to cross it out. But I think, oh, also, I think what's nice about that is the mess comes from you, whereas from typewriter mm. it's it's just a computer you can delete it. Whereas the mess stays. But if it was like something personal, but I don't really write personal things. Like I only really write. Like I don't keep a diary or anything. Like I only really write stuff that's two people or stuff that's like work or something. Yeah. Would you end so? Do you just feel that you write because you feel like you have to, almost? Apart from that, well, no, I have to write that, I think Yeah. <laughs> One thing I find really great is that you can just, um, if you have like several ideas, you can you can kind of draw around, it's like swap those around, or really these can swap, and then you can like, like make up like a million different little alterations. Where with, and you can kind of put, you can play with like size and, Everything, but like, cause you, cause, because although you have all that control on a computer, it's not as intuitive, I find, but fine, because you have to like type in everything. Um, yeah, uh, what I do is I use post it notes and then. Post it like, notes are brilliant, I like post it notes. notes. But I think it might be because of the fact that I've always been like, because like, I work for my mum and she was like in IT. Like, yeah. I've always been at a computer. And she's probably got it into my head that it's, uh, it's a computer. <laughs> but, yeah.